Under the Ocean Waves hides a story filled with surprises, suspense, and frightened whispers. It's about a man, a scuba diver, named Rob Stewart, and a journey that ended in an unsettling mystery. Rob Stewart, a filmmaker, conservationist, and fearless advocate for the world beneath the waves, left a legacy that continues to ripple through the tides of time. But his journey was more than just a quest for adventure. It was a profound odyssey that transformed him from a curious child splashing in lakes to a global champion for marine conservation. Welcome back to the Detectiverse, where we unravel enigmas from across the globe, delving into the depths of history, revealing hidden truths behind both solved and unsolved crimes, and unearthing spine-chilling real stories that will haunt your thoughts. Join us as we delve into the story of Rob Stewart, a famous scuba diver who disappeared on his last dive. Stewart was well known not only as a diver, but also as a fierce conqueror of our oceans. His final dive was surrounded by mystery, ending in a way that shocked everyone. Without further ado, let's get into the story. Rob Stewart was born on December 28, 1979, in the heart of Toronto, Canada. Since his earliest days, he harbored an unquenchable love for the natural world, especially the mysterious ocean and its mesmerizing inhabitants. Water was his sanctuary, a second home where he felt as comfortable as on solid ground. On family camping trips, he'd be the first to plunge into the water, emerging with some curious creature clutched in his eager grasp, whether it be a frog or a turtle, much to his father's amusement. As he spent hours snorkeling, his curiosity led him to every nook of the lake, which soon evolved into a profound desire to explore the ocean's depths. By the tender age of 13, he'd successfully persuaded his entire family to become certified scuba divers, driven by his yearning to venture deeper and linger longer beneath the waves. By the age of 18, he had already become a scuba diving instructor, a natural progression in his dedication to the aquatic world. This enduring fascination with marine life would be the foundation of his extraordinary career as a filmmaker, conservationist, and fearless advocate for sharks. Rob's academic journey took him to the University of Western Ontario, where he delved into the study of biology, deepening his understanding of the web of life. Concurrently, he embarked on a career as a wildlife photographer, a path that would soon reveal to him the fragile beauty of the environment and ignite his unyielding commitment to its preservation. Rob Stewart's journey from casual observer to a passionate advocate had been a transformative one. The notion of endangered species had once been distant, merely an abstract concept. It was during his travels, a world away from Toronto, that the harsh reality of environmental threats hit him square in the heart. In Borneo, he witnessed the heartbreaking encroachment of palm oil plantations on the habitat of proboscis monkeys. In the Galapagos, he came face to face with the devastation caused by long line fishing on shark populations. These experiences, etched in his memory, would forever change his perspective. Stewart understood that the power of storytelling and the visual medium of film had the potential to bridge the gap between people and the precious yet fragile marine ecosystems. In 2006, he unveiled his groundbreaking documentary, Sharkwater, embarking on a four-year odyssey across 12 countries, including Costa Rica, the Galapagos Islands, and the Bahamas. His mission? to capture the mesmerizing beauty of underwater life and unveil the grim truth of shark finning, an industry wreaking havoc on shark populations and ocean ecosystems. Shark water made waves upon its release, earning accolades, including over 40 awards worldwide and shattering Canadian box office records. More importantly, it achieved Stewart's ultimate goal, altering the global perception of sharks. The documentary served as a resounding wake-up call sparking a worldwide movement for shark conservation. But then January 31st, 2017 arrived, a seemingly ordinary day for the intrepid filmmaker. On that fateful morning, Rob Stewart boarded the dive boat Pisces, setting sail from the idyllic island of Isla Mirada, nestled close to Key Largo, Florida. The destination was the Queen of Nassau, a sunken Canadian steamship that rested 70 meters or 230 feet beneath the ocean's surface. On that day, Rob Stewart had a singular elusive goal in his mind, 
to capture footage of the mysterious sawfish, a creature that once thrived in tropical Atlantic waters, boasting a staggering five-foot saw blade atop a formidable 20-foot frame. Yet like so many of its fellow sharks and rays, relentless hunting had pushed the sawfish to the brink of extinction. It now graced divers with sporadic, almost surreal appearances before vanishing back into the ocean's depths. With a small, dedicated crew by his side, boat captain David Wilkerson, trusted friend and collaborator Brock K. Hill, experienced dive instructor Peter Sotis, and Peter's wife Claudia, a doctor, the 37-year-old filmmaker embarked on a daring dive into the abyss, plunging deeper than he ever had before. However, despite their efforts, the sawfish remained absent on that day. Disappointed but determined, the team surfaced from their second dive, only to realize they'd inadvertently left a grappling hook entangled on the sunken wreck, connected to a buoy on the surface. Without hesitation, Stewart and Sodas decided to dive once more to retrieve it. As they resurfaced from their third descent, just after 5 p.m., Stewart flashed the OK sign but a palpable sense of urgency soon gripped the atmosphere. As Soda struggled to climb into the boat, it was evident that he needed immediate medical attention. He briefly lost consciousness, sending panic rippling through the crew as they rushed to provide him with oxygen. But in the midst of this crisis, a dreadful realization struck them. Rob Stewart had vanished beneath the waves. Panic gripped Brock K. Hill as he screamed, Where's Rob? The news of Stewart's disappearance spread like wildfire, igniting a global outpouring of support. Rescue teams, volunteers, and fellow conservationists rallied in a desperate quest to locate him and bring him back to safety. The search operation escalated to unprecedented levels, employing cutting-edge technology and an unwavering determination to uncover any leads or any piece of information that might yield a breakthrough. Days blurred into nights, and emotions swung between despair and optimism. Stewart's family, friends, and devoted fans clung to the belief that he would resurface alive and unharmed. To them, he was more than just a man. He was a superhuman force of nature. Julie Anderson, one of Stewart's close friends and colleagues, could only speculate. What if he had somehow stayed afloat and ended up on a boat full of hot college co-eds in the Bahamas sipping coconuts? Yet on Friday, February 3rd, 2017, after an extensive search that spanned nearly 6,000 square miles of ocean, conducted by two Coast Guard helicopters, multiple agencies, and the tireless efforts of the general public, the heart-wrenching news came to pass. Rob Stewart's lifeless body was discovered. Mere minutes after Captain Jeffrey Jansen, commander of the U.S. Coast Guard sector in Key West, had announced the conclusion of the multi-agency search. The world had lost a visionary filmmaker, a tireless conservationist, and a champion of the oceans. The discovery of Rob Stewart's lifeless body, found so close to where he had disappeared, at a depth of 217 feet, or 66.4 meters, left everyone grappling with unanswered questions. To the Stewarts, the notion that their son had perished in a simple scuba diving accident seemed perplexing. They vividly remembered him as a child, effortlessly donning fins and a mask, taking a deep breath, and swimming the entire length of a lake with an innate ease. As he grew older, Stewart's diving expeditions took him away for three to six months at a time, leaving his parents to constantly worry. Yet Rob had always reassured them with unwavering confidence, saying, I just have this belief that I'm going to be okay, and I'm sure I'm going to be okay. Indeed, Rob Stewart was an expert scuba diver, but that fateful day in the Florida Keys marked one of his first ventures into the world of rebreathers. Rebreathers, sophisticated closed loop systems, cleanse exhaled breath of carbon dioxide and replenish it with oxygen, enabling divers to reach greater depths and extend their time underwater. These silent devices, devoid of bubbles that could startle skittish creatures like sawfish, held the promise of new, mesmerizing underwater experiences. To master the intricate equipment, Stewart had sought guidance from Peter Sodas, an experienced instructor and the proprietor of a rebreather supply shop. Sodas had gained recognition as the leader of a daring dive team, known for pushing the boundaries as they explored deep walls, wrecks exceeding 600 feet, and extreme underwater caves. However, Sodas's reputation in Florida's diving community was far from unblemished. 
His past included incidents of armed robbery and the sale of non-compliant scuba tanks, casting shadows of doubt and mistrust. Rob Stewart was renowned among divers for his willingness to test the boundaries of what was considered safe. Andy Casagrande, a National Geographic underwater cinematographer who collaborated with Stewart, recounted how he often pushed the envelope, advocating for deeper and faster dives. Despite Peter Sotis's controversial reputation, Stewart engaged in daring underwater explorations with him pushing beyond recommended limits. While most experts advised limiting dives in the 200 plus foot range to just one per day, Stewart and Sotis ventured further, embarking on multiple dives that day. As Neil Pollock, an experienced diver and the first research chair in hyperbaric and diving medicine at Laval University noted, two dives was tempting fate, three dives was hubris. It wasn't that such dives were guaranteed to be unsafe, rather, they were seen as recklessly cavalier. In March 2017, the Stewart family took legal action by launching a negligence lawsuit against Peter Sotis, his wife Claudia, and Horizon Dive Adventures, the owners of the Pisces dive boat. At the time, none of the involved parties had filed a statement of defense. Horizon Dive Adventures requested a stay in the proceedings, arguing that the incident had been caused solely by conditions beyond their control. The Stewart family sought answers as to why someone hadn't been closely monitoring Rob when he surfaced. According to his dive computer, Stewart had spent three critical minutes on the surface between the end of his third dive and his disappearance. In their statement of claim, the Stewarts asserted that Sotis and the rest of the crew had a duty to exercise reasonable care for the safety of their passengers. Since the tragic accident, Peter Sotis declared his departure from the dive industry, and his company faced bankruptcy. Amidst their quest for answers surrounding their son's tragic death, the Stewart family found themselves propelled forward by Rob's last project, an unfinished film that held hours upon hours of precious footage. Uncertain whether this material could be molded into a coherent movie, they embarked on a journey of creation and remembrance. After consultations with documentarians from various corners of the country, they encountered Nick Hector, an acclaimed editor who had crossed paths with Rob just a few months prior to his passing. Hector assured the Stewarts that his approach would be clear and direct. We have to make Rob's film, he told them. We will strive to delve into his mindset and narrate the film using his own words. Armed with Rob's footage, notes, diaries, iPads, emails, and the visionary scribbles that outlined his aesthetic vision, Hector enlisted the assistance of Sterla Gunnarsson, an award-winning documentary filmmaker as a creative consultant. Over nine painstaking months, they meticulously pieced together a movie from the hundreds of hours of film that Rob Stewart had shot. The result was nothing short of breathtaking. Shark Water Extinction was a whirlwind of a film darting across the globe. Stewart flew a drone over a warehouse in Costa Rica, revealing the grim sight of illegal shark fins drying on the roof. He talked his way onto a boat in Cape Verde, capturing footage of a mountain of butchered blue sharks. He staked out fishermen off the coast of Los Angeles who callously decimated marine life with drift nets and even had to flee when they opened fire on his crew. The final version of Shark Water Extinction emerged in 2018, a testament to Rob Stewart's unwavering dedication to exposing the harsh realities threatening our oceans. In one of the film's poignant final scenes, we witness Stewart and Sotis aboard the Pisces navigating the waters as they set out on their quest to find the sawfish. The sun bathes the gently swelling ocean in a glistening embrace, a poignant tribute to the man who dedicated his life to the sea and its creatures. As we reflect on the remarkable journey of Rob Stewart, from his early days as a fearless young explorer to his transformative career as a passionate advocate for our oceans, we can't help but wonder, what legacy does Rob Stewart leave behind? How has his work influenced your perspective on marine conservation? Are you inspired to take action, as Rob did, to protect our precious underwater ecosystems? <laughs>